Alrighty, let's hope we're in synchronization here. I didn't check to see if the microscope camera was working. Yeah, it looks filthy enough. Alright, time to kick back, wait for people to turn up. Before we get started. Well, we'll give them three or four minutes and then we'll get started. Let's see. Have I forgotten anything? Probably. Have a drink of water. Hi, Mr. Alex Kenny. Haven't seen you for a while. Hey, Mark Little. Ah, I gotta keep myself hydrated. Rich, Ed, hello Ed, and all, Noel rather, loaded him, custom premise, electronic smoke, uh, not many people would say magic smoke UK, but electronic smoke is also good, and Alan, how's it going, Let's see what else we got, Mr. Howe, Mr. Let's Put Parts Upside Down and Tell Paul, Ed World Tech Fix, Stockholms and Jim, of course. Jim, I was about to message you, but you're already here. And Claudine, I think. Diaz from Brazil. Oh, we've got everybody across the world here, so we're doing good. Alright, I'm trying to decide what we're going to tackle first, but I think we'll just jump into a 1398 that's been having issues. Um, I've actually worked on this machine before, but I've done a battery replacement and a hard drive replacement of this, but I don't recall doing any board work on it, so I guess we'll be doing board work. <sighs> Let's see if my thingy jig's working. Uh, I won't show up on my face, so let's try overhead. Yep, there we go. It's working tonight. Mm. Right, we're going to use this one, but I just have to wipe off the old data. Do a secure erase. Kind of what happens when you've had a head crash on your hard drive and you decide you're going to spin it up because you might get lucky and get some data off it. See, so YouTube's complaining it's not getting enough data. How's everybody going with that? Hey, Guzman. Grinding our teeth, hey, John Finn. No, just uh, cavities, unfortunately. Maybe too much ice cream, perhaps. But these are pretty long term ones. It's the same old thing, you get older and that uh, resistance against cavities just fades away as your teeth get thinner and well the enamel gets thinner it seems. Uh, that or your mouth becomes more acid. Either way, you end up losing the game. Uh, see I'll put a 480 transcend drive in here so it's uh, quite a nice one. Also very expensive. It's very, very expensive. Ruslan, did you study CS on your own or in university? I did both. I did go to university, but I also did a lot of my own stuff. So it was a combination of everything. And since I'm the one that did it, I'm going to decide that that was the best option. I just realised I do have a container for this already. It's down on the floor, right next to the panel that I took off. Hey Pedro. Uh, Tesla? No, you didn't miss it yet. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Start pulling this thing down. I'm actually wondering if this is a triple three two, which it does look like it's triple three two, unless my eyes are deceiving me. <coughs> uh, 
Is there any chance I could have possibly have let this go out of the workshop without doing a U8900 repair? That seems a little unlike me. But I guess I'll find out once I take it off and I'll be able to see if there is a sort of typical looking someone's done work around here type look. I can see some flux up here or something up here. So I may have already done it. In which case I'm going to be a bit concerned because then I'm thinking well what could this fault be? So I'm really finding I have to bring the chat window down into the middle here. Uh, otherwise I've got to crick my neck up too much and I'm like ah oh, I don't want to read the chat. So apparently this has trouble coming out of sleep which often is an issue with the non-original drives but these transcend ones are supposed to not have that issue and the fact also that it seemingly has been getting worse so it kind of indemnifies indemnifies me? It kind of gets me off the hook a little bit I think I don't think indemnifies the word I wanted I'm living off three hours sleep right now I'm really not the best person to pick words We were trying to rescue some kitty cats and we got them into our um, one of the pens in our yard. But unfortunately they kicked up such a ruckus and distressed our cats so much that we just had to end up letting them out before they caused quite significant damage to themselves or to our or caused ours to get sick, things like that, just from the stress. Now I know it sounds a little bit silly, but believe me, you've got a diabetic cat, you know that it doesn't take much. And don't worry, we didn't have them in any, uh, there was a a physical separation of quite a few meters between the two sets of cats as in the ones that we tried to rescue and the uh, our own but uh, it really needs to be soundproofed and probably half a mile away oh, there's always so many little things on these to take off take off the little rubber cap Just when you think you're ready to take the board out, it's like, oh no, 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 no. No, Mr. Daniels, you still have much work to be done. Hey there, board. Uh, and Draco. Okay, maybe now I'm done. That seems a little more... Or is it? I'm fairly sure it's triple three two. There is a bit of stuff around here, so it's quite possible it is this one. We'll have a look under the microscope and that will positively identify because if I have done the U8900 on this, it will probably have fresh solder around some of the test pads. And that's not U8900, of course. And this is not U8900 board. This is something else. This, what are you? What are you? 3662. Oh. All right then. Well, we have a new game afoot. Something else is amiss on this board. That will explain why I don't recall doing the U8900 on it. Because there is no U8900. Bit of junk under the SMC. More fluff and junk. Some corrosion.
I have the year on my job, I do. Let's see. Uh, you know, that was probably an assumption. I probably took that from... I probably went to... What was it? Uh, Every Mac. And checked on serial number. And then made an assumption. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not my strong point when it comes to MacBook repairs. If I get put on the spot, it's like... What's the common fault of the 2012 A1278 in the 13-inch configuration? I'll be like, uh... Yeah. But on the other hand, if you send me an infrared camera and say, hey, can you do anything with this? Then maybe I can do something. And there's a tiny bit of corrosion over there that might have something to do with it. So talking about having a hard time getting out of sleep, I'll check this hall sensor as well. Uh, what are you? 95826... Hey Sonia, how's it going? Looking to identify a 3 pin Zener diode SOP23 with a body ID WH5. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good luck trying to good luck trying to come up with the um, original parts working back from that. I really hope this isn't one of the VRM models. Come on, give me some decent corrosion I can attack. I really do not wish to have to replace the VRMs on this. Oh god, please don't be... Because yeah. that little speck of corrosion that we saw just before is nah, I just don't buy that that's a fault we'll give it a wash but I really don't think that's it the whole sense is on the other side of the board uh, others those in diam diagonally across not physically flipped Yeah, I mean, that can't be responsible for anything. That was too trivial. Ah, <sighs> uh, Pianov, no, this is the um, 3662. Is it? Yeah, 3662. The whole sensor looks okay. Yet another disappointment. There's enough junk on here for me to hope that there's corrosion, but eh, it just doesn't look like it's developed yet. What's Copaz doing here? Copaz, what the hell are you doing up at this hour of the morning? Yeah, Pianov, I know, I know. It is a lie. I'll correct that. Actually, I'll correct that right now. Six, nine, four, five. <laughs> Here we go, corrected. Mm -hmm. 
Hey Daniel. Ah, Mr. ITM2 is here. Yeah, let's have a look down here. It seems kind of drastic to have to replace those. Oh, there we go. How the hell did I not see that before? I mean, is that enough? I don't know, but um, I'm willing to take it. Ah, oh, John, thank you. Yeah, took away what I thought was a optimizing feature for lower CPU hit, but it uh, turns out it also took away my pretty looks. Kopaz, what are you doing for work these days anyway? I mean, you're, like, you're hanging out at the Rossman Group, but are you actually being employed, or are you just being a, uh, like a cloud of bad air that follows everybody around or something? I'm trying to say that in the nicest possible way you realize. So you just basically, you're one of those people that relies on other people to break down, give up, and cave in, and then basically you sort of become like a, uh, a living thing. You just hang out there. I mean, yeah, there's no harm in hanging out there, I think. I think it's pretty good fun. Let's see. Well, that's only a 10 nanofarad. No, it's not even a 10 nanofarad. It's one nanofarad. I'd be very surprised if that was causing the trouble, but we'll have a look. Five thirty-four, five thirty-five. I mean, certainly it needs to be cleaned up, but I'm not sure I can call that the culprit either. Pernov, do you replace the VRMs on this very often? Oh, I suppose you don't really get them that often. I should have been asking Tim that. I've done them a couple of times, but I can't remember whether it was on this particular board, 3662, or another board. It doesn't help when these are marginal issues, where it turns on for a little bit and then doesn't. I suppose we could put power to it and see if that cap heats up more than it should. That's one way of testing but I'll be very surprised I strongly anticipate it to be an anti-climax hey Subatino 3662 is most affected right yeah. brilliant yeah, not really what I wanted to hear you say, of course, Pernov, but uh, that is the reality of it, isn't it? Well, we'll power it up, have a look, but yeah. I have a suspicion that the VRMs is what I'm going to be doing. You got that the wrong way around, Paul.
Um, ben, I've, I'm not too sure. I haven't had a chance to test it, and the client just simply said that it has become increasingly more difficult to get out of um, sleep or to get it to wake up again. So make of that what you will. I kind of do want this to work for them because it's a obviously quite an expensive board. Um, they've invested quite a bit of money in it, rather. Hmm. Here we go again. Uh huh. Looks like I've got this upside down as usual. And it just disconnected as usual. It's going to be perpetually upside down. Here comes the ugly. There we go. Thankfully it crashed. So not the software that crashes, it's the cable connection. I do have a cable arriving, it's just, it just takes a little time. Let's see, that's where we want to view. I'll do. We've got our power. Parallax looks out of alignment. Yeah, that's why you have a manual adjustment. You can't really tell actually until... So... There you go. It's not supposed to be perfect. If you're looking for something that's absolutely 100% perfect around the alignments and all that, then that's the wrong thing to chase on these things. Okay, so nothing's coming up there, so there's nothing wrong there. It's getting warm over here. Well, I'm not expecting anything, to be honest. Kind of curious what it is getting hot here. Hey, Warren Stamps. Hmm. Oh, well. Anyway. That's not what... I'd say more than likely what we have here are the VRMs. 
And that's really not what I was wanting. We'll put this aside. Uh, parallax is going to be a problem with all of the infrared cameras, no matter how you do it, unless you can have a coaxial um, coaxial set of lenses, which you're not. You're always going to have a real lens, yeah, the visual lens and the infrared lens side by side. And you can get them as close as you can, but at the end of the day, you're going to have parallax issues, no matter how you try to improve on that. I'm going to put this aside. I really am not in the mood to do VRMs right now. I'll do them in the morning. But I'm feeling fresh and better. It's all too easy to make a mistake with them and cook your CPU and say goodbye. So we'll get the other job out. Uh, what's the other job? Oh yeah, we've got a 1286. Right, looks like I'm going to have to do some cropping there of my text. Uh, B Pope, yeah, this is the FLIR camera, FLIR 1 Pro. At least that's what was there. Always fun bringing up Phillips screwdrivers for this. Nope, wrong size. Now, with regards to the, right, I was going to say about the FLIR news, uh, basically, I had a few messages last night and spoke to a few people, and after seeing the video where it essentially just straight away pinpoints the fault and you know, eliminates all the blurriness and the uncertainty and things like that, I've had a few people say that maybe I should really just look at commercializing the software that I write and I thought yeah why the heck not um, so I've had to rewrite it again completely from scratch because the original source is GPL and obviously while I can distribute the binaries and make money from it if people ask for the source code well of course they can and then yeah, I'm not really a big fan of that method so yeah, I'm rewriting everything from scratch. We've got a wire here, right, I was informed about that. And, yeah, we'll, um, I figure if people can pay $600 plus f for an infrared camera like that, they probably wouldn't mind coughing up a little more for a good piece of software to make it work well. Why did I do that? All those screws need to stick together. So that's that's pretty much the dramatic news. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, this is not a twenty nine fifteen that I can tell. This this is a 
triple three o. Okay, so it's dead after battery replaced. I suppose one thing I should check is see if a replacement battery would actually fix it up. Sometimes I've found these third-party batteries can be rather unpredictably bad. Or should I rather say predictably bad. This one feels quite light to be honest. 1382. That feels very light. Uh, normally these batteries should be quite heavy. That's got a lot of weight missing from it somewhere. I might go see... Ooh, do I have one in here? Or did I throw it out in a fit of haste? Anyway, as it is, I mean, obviously there's already the GPL software that was out there. The uh, one that I first started with. I had a look at. So I figure at least there already is a resource. Yeah, you look like you're right. Yep, that would be it. So I'm not specifically depriving people from any option, but I am saying, look, if you... Whoop, that's theirs. I don't want to steal theirs. I'm sort of saying if you want one that works that little bit better, I can offer it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't rest, I wait. Okay. Yeah, so this this has about fifty percent more mass than this one here. Yeah, this is for the twenty nine fifteen, so I don't know how we're gonna go with that. I'll disconnect this hard drive. I will take the hard drive out. I'm not a fan of leaving hard drives in machines, as you all know. I know there's going to be some people who cry foul about that and say, you know, Jim gave you that camera and you go along and you go and start making money out of it. I say, yep. That's, you know, I'll put the hours in. And besides, I've already checked with Jim. He had a response. <laughs> Putting you on the spot there, aren't I, Jim? Yeah, sorry. I, I won't do that. I'm sorry. Sometimes Chinese power banks use sand filled 80, 18650s make them feel real. I completely believe that. Utterly, completely believe that. Now, if I do achieve a certain goal that a lot of people know I'm aiming for right now, then I'll be able to s push back and sort of go, okay, well, goal's achieved. We can um, be the altruistic person once again. But for the last 30 plus years, I've been exceptionally altruistic when it comes to software development. So I think it's about time that I became the Donald Trump for a little while. Okay, well, I'm going to read now the bedtime story. Uh, let's see, wait, let's read Nick's first. LCD panel backlight testing can I inject the appropriate voltage and expect the light to come on and flicker? We need to confirm the panel lights up. Depends if that's a CFL or a LED type one. Okay. Original problem was that it would not run from battery unless the battery was nearly truly charged. Okay, so that'd be a standard battery nearly dead. Question from Sam above. Uh, I said panel of uh, Sam. I love the crosshair effects. I pay for it. Will it be compatible with other brands such as Seek that Jesse uses? Um, I'll be honest and say I just don't know. I don't know what the Seek interface is like for data transfer or anything like that. Unfortunately, with a lot of these things, unless I get my hands on them, I basically can't do a lot. There's been very few instances where. 
I can write software without having the device on hand. I think Lewis's BK390 meter was one of the rare ones that I could do that. That was a serious gamble too, given that it was Lewis that I was dealing with, because you all know what he's like when it comes to software. Uh, but yeah, without it being on hand, I can't do much. But I mean, like Jim sent me the FLIR 1 Pro, and over the course of a weekend and a bit, I've already produced the software that I need to. The downside to the Seek is that it does not have the visual camera on it, so you'll only get the infrared image. The upside of the Seek is, if it is the high-end one, it does have the 320x240 resolution, so you may be able to actually make out a bit more of the device that you're uh, analysing. But it does tend to, though, eliminate some of the features that I'm utilising with the FLIR 1 Pro, as in the way that I remove most of the temperature range palette and only reveal what is the high-end temperatures. If you do that with the um, Seeks, you'll end up with nothing on the screen, whereas with the FLIR 1 Pro, you get the visual image coming through. Let's see, Richard Stallman will be under my bed tonight. Oh, good, good. He can keep the cats company. Anyway, I have to see if I can get it to compile, my software to compile on Windows and Mac OS. I mean, it does compile, but it doesn't work. So, yeah. yeah back to the story. So, yeah, it sounded like originally it was a bad battery. Change the battery. Let's go to this one. It only has a fan spin and constant sleep indicator illuminated. Ooh, okay. So they've gone through and they've checked a few things, they've removed a few parts, broke a few things. At least they've been honest, I appreciate that. Um, right, damage the circuit, solder pad, 7967. Alright, well, this is going to be fun, this is a nice little project. Alright, let's get started on this project. Let's see what it does when I have that plugged in with the new battery. Well, not new battery, the old battery. I need my MagSafe 1. Lately I'm spending a fortune on MagSafe bricks. It's like I never can have enough of them. Okay, fan spinning up. I really should have plugged something in for it to boot from. Yeah, this should work. Come here, you. I did finally manage to get a um, HFS Plus drive set up, and I also put an APFS on, and you know, split the drive in half. So I've got one that does HFS, the other one does APFS. So hopefully that will get me out of trouble now. Unless of course I find out then that the boot sector and the GPT table and all that is only readable under APFS. Well, it's cooking up pretty fast. We're not getting any real activity so I am worried that the SMC is being cooked. And we definitely didn't have a bong. We're charging the pack. It's not responding to the keyboard. Like I'm trying to hold down the button. It's not shutting down. Nick, uh, the backlight tester, that is a good idea. I have often thought of that myself. As being a, yeah, this thing is not responding to the keyboard and it's not uh, doing anything. It is staying on. So 
So, yeah, strong likelihood of an SMC failure. But I suppose we better deal with all the existing things that have been listed on this sheet. Certainly a backlight tester, I think that's the sort of project that Harold would do a good job doing. It's the sort of thing I used to do a lot of, but uh, not anymore. If I'm going to do something like that, it'll probably be for model aircraft again. Uh, we don't get in down here, at least I'm not aware of. Mine was just a repair of a filling that uh, fell out a couple of weeks ago so they put a temporary filling in and that got me through till today and then they you know, set me up for the proper one Ooh, I was wondering where this was the ridiculous tools you have to buy sometimes this is a 0.9 millimeter hex driver and there's only one phone that I used this on and it was such a pain to work on that phone that I spent the money to buy a 0.9 millimeter hex driver. God help me if I can't get a one millimeter and I decide to pull out the 0.9 and damage it. You know I'm gonna do it. It's the sort of retarded thing I'd do. Okay, TX6 for the 1270-86s. Uh, Oops. Pushing down a little hard there. Hey Jay Cozzy, you're in the Sunshine Coast. Oh, okay, whereabouts? I do love Mullaney down there. Very nice down there. Although I suppose technically Mullaney is a little more up there. Being in the hinterlands. Alright, Jin. Enjoy the sleep. Glad someone's getting some. Put hazard tape on the handle here. <laughs> Do you want to lose $15? Use this incorrectly and you'll get to do that. Morning, Jose. I'm kind of hoping my lights will turn up tomorrow. Could really do with them. Sneaky. It's, this is other sneaky. Are we ready to come out? Yes, we are. I used to have a triple three O, but I sold it at some point. I figured I had enough old MacBooks around the house. I really needed to start offloading. It was kind of sad to have to get, you know, to get rid of it because they, they are a nice machine. But in fairness, I do have some 1398s. So yeah, it's, how do you justify having a 1286 when you got some 1398s? Ooh, yeah. I've got to try and fix this iPad as well. <sighs> they had the screen replaced, and there's no Wi-Fi. You get a Wi-Fi device, but there's no range. You've got to put it right next to the router, so what they've done is they've probably cut the Wi-Fi cable antennas. Trouble is, I don't know how to um, do that either. Whoa, okay, nice. Impressive bodge. Extra points for the quality of the bodge. I would say that's third party RAM. OWC, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a Mac with. Um, 
I could be wrong. I don't get to see that many of them, but I've just personally never myself seen one with that. Okay, that's pretty neat. So they've got this resistor. Uh, it's going to require a bit of surgery to actually get it off there, though. What frustrates me about that iPad is the fact that it should have gone straight back to the store that did it. It shouldn't have been a case of, oh, we'll get someone else to fix it up. Okay, so we've got a fried wire, and I guess that's what they've done. And they've got themselves a 120 ohm resistor there. Uh, neat. <laughs> Talk about a serious cable tying job there. That's pretty cool. And not bad on the soldering job, considering it looks like it has been ultrasonic. Alright. Well, the first thing we'll do is take that off. It's actually a pretty good budge, to be honest. Yeah, I've seen some bodges where there's just no care, but you know, they've got it lined up. They didn't overly, considering how small this is, they haven't overly melted the wire or anything. It's um, pretty good going. Yeah, I'm not going to knock this one. They did that wire better than I could, that's for sure. But we do need to get it out of the way. Yeah, and they've put care into it. Yeah, they've heat shrinked it, and spliced cable tied it, all that stuff. You just don't see that sort of level of care normally. Okay, one of the problem was that those were shorted across. to yeah wonder if it's going to be easier for me to break this cable tie or de-latch it Uh, Stain RA, to be honest, look, I haven't really checked exactly what it's all for. Unfortunately, in these situations, I have a bad habit of getting a little bit... I think I'm going to have to cut this. It's not easy to cut these with a knife. Let's see if I've got some edge cutters. But they put it so... Man, this person's a serious... This person's a very well-qualified cable tie crimper. Puller, I mean. I'm butchering it more just trying to get it off. Come oh, on, where's my exacto knife? Sorry I'm broken. <laughs> oh, burn off. 
Away we go. Uh, someone cared. That's nice. But I think it was just a case of, in this particular instance, they didn't have the tools required to quite get down to the level they wanted. It probably didn't matter that they made contact with this, because I suspect that is just going nowhere. Uh, well, I'll have to check around this area. This here is a bigger problem. See how this has been delaminated? I'm not sure if they're aware of that. This is the one I'm pretty sure they were trying to do. So yeah, we're going to have to do some reconstructive work here. And I'm going to enjoy this. I hope. Hey Nick Basie. Now, I don't like melting plastic if I can help it. It stinks to high hell. And if there's one thing that I suffer a lot of, it's from um, overly sensitive smell reception. Someone can be smoking in the park a block or so. Oh, that on the other hand is a bit unfortunate. And I will choke up a cough and... Uh, okay, so definitely a triple three zero. I'm not sure what happened there. Got lots of scratchy scratchy. I'll have to look at their paper soon, because if they're watching, they'll be screaming at me going, I wrote it down. Why do I write it down for? If you're going to ignore it. I will, but I've just got to look over the whole board first. I hope I've actually got a SMC for this. I wonder if they've cleaned it using... Okay, there's been some corrosion down here. I wonder if they've cleaned it using metho and a toothbrush or something. OSSR that thing? What is OSSR? Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. Occupational safety... I don't know. Alright. That's taking a bit of heat. I wonder what a... Came close to gouging. Not sure what that chip is. Looks like we've got a part knocked off there. That pad's been almost taken off. Smoke doesn't bother you, acetone does. Yeah, okay. Overexposed while at Chrysler's. Well, that would make sense. It's kind of like me with um, cyanosilicrates now. I only have to get a mere whiff and I feel like I'm getting the flu. Maybe you should strip trailing new lines from the string. What? Uh, oh, right. Yeah. I get. That's strange. I don't remember that actually floating up like that. No, it actually wasn't that high above before, so... There we go. Everybody happy now. Overly sensitive smell reception. Ah, right. Yeah, it could be that. I've always had it. I used to complain about things to my parents and my sibling and be like, what are you talking about? 
And then later on they'll go, oh. But yeah, thanks for not believing me the first time. Oh, we've got a green field here. the chance that that crystal still working is. It's got a fair bit of fuzz on it. Honestly, it almost feels like this should take another dive in the ultrasonic. But, yeah, we'll get that, the obvious stuff fixed up. Uh, this here, that could easily be a problem cap. Hey Andre, perhaps I was a bloodhound in previous life, maybe so. No, it's not shorter, but it's certainly not pretty. This is the uh, forest green edition. No, I'm definitely going to take the heat sink off this. Far too easy to hide a lot of stuff under those heat sinks. Uh. Um, as for the infrared camera software and all that, I'm trying to think of a pricing. I mean, you know, when it comes to software, pricing is a really funny thing. It, um, well, I guess with everything that you, anything that you're trying to sell. So I'm kind of thinking around about the 59, around about that sort of mark. Some people have suggested 100 or 99. It depends on how the buyer, well, the potential buyer, perceives the value. If they feel that the fact that it can just sort of go noink and, and point out where the heat is, is worth a hundred bucks to do it six times a day then you know brilliant uh, this needs a shave the other problem of course I've got to balance up is, is the one that I had with flexboard view is that if you make it too accessible then you get a lot of people who actually become a support nightmare so you kind of want it high enough to avoid support nightmares but low enough to be realistic and to represent what it really is worth at least yeah but value is a very subjective proposition so and no matter what I pick there's going to be people saying it's not right you need to be higher or slash lower take your pick so in the end you sort of end up picking a number Ignoring the people who say it's wrong and let the sales do the talking. Ask Lewis how much he would pay f and then add 20. Don't you mean like double it? <laughs> Does the cost of the thermal camera take care of them? Um, not sure what you mean by that. I mean, to be fair, that, like, that thermal camera is you know, five, six hundred dollars. And for the moment, the first time around, it's going to be only for the Fluor 1 Pro USB-C model. Because that's the only one I've got. But if I can get enough sales off that, then I might just buy the other cameras that are on the market and start producing the software for all of them. I'm just looking to see if there's any pads that are in a bad way. Honestly, this feels like a restorer's club job. You know when you see the videos and the people pull out this rusted old vice from some dump place and they make a video where they don't do any talking, it's all just subtitles and they get a million views. And it's pretty cool. Alright, let's get stop wobbling on and start fixing stuff before people genuinely get bored. 
2.99 quid, so yeah, that'd be about 5.50 Australian. Hey, Christian. So yeah, that matches up. I'm pretty sure that's about what they cost here last time I looked. Oh, excuse me. All right. So this is the big obvious area that we started with. So let's have a look at the board view and see what we can do. Ten percent of the average cost of the cameras would be an ill's easy upsell to people buying the hardware. Alex, now that's a um, that's a good point. Yes, so that would put it around about the fifty sort of uh, fifty nine US dollar. Well, that okay, that's a little higher, but I probably wouldn't want to go too much lower than fifty. So maybe forty nine. Forty nine's a bad number though. Thirty nine tends to have a little more feel to it but I'm probably going to start attracting the wrong sorts but then you could be arguing that the people who buy the Fluor One Pro camera um, they've already paid out that sort of money so they can't be that bad can they? <laughs> anyway, um, let's see sometimes you can just go on and on and on trying to work out these things when you're just in the end better off trying and seeing what am I doing here could do the Walmart approach and end in 8 no I haven't seen that one yeah 60 is too low 99 minimum yeah I'd have a feeling 99 might scare too many people off I'd say 79 maybe 79 sort of is pretty quick to come off the mark. If I can't do 79, maybe 67. In the end, you're always wrong. Yeah, that's true. Alright, so we're looking at this and not doing anything with it. So let's switch over to... Is my all-in working? Yeah, all-in's working well enough. If you don't have high definition, that's unfortunate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually repair this trace. Once I actually work out what it is. So it's, there's a triple set of resistors here. And that trace actually comes from this one here. All says power good, which they did mention. Yes. And what was it? 79.67. I need to mark off. You can't see what I'm doing here, but. 79.67. Okay. I'm marking off the resistors that I find that, that this person has actually marked down. So they've lost this part here. And the nub. Okay, that can go to a million places. Interesting, I wonder if the nub is actually connected to that one there. Sometimes you're before the rest of the trace, sometimes you're behind it. Sixty-nine. Oh, oh, buzz. <laughs> those who use it and just buy the hardware, and then those who try it and are unsure. First will shit out. Second might. Yeah, the, that's whoops. You get the, some people that have got more money than know what to do with, which is nice. Okay, so that's good. Those two are connected. If I can't get a ball on that, then I can just jump across that's easy enough but the trick is now I've got to make sure that that actually does go off to other parts of the board so like that top resistor up here 
Yeah, see, like, that doesn't make any connection there. Have I got the right one? Yep. Okay, and of course... Okay, that's pretty amazing. They managed to take out the same line just by bad luck. Okay, so that's connected to that, but that's not connected. I'm kind of curious why this is such a high current line. Unless that's a zero ohm resistor. 7951. No, you're 15k. You're definitely not. Very curious why that's a big thick trace. It's not feeding this that I can tell. Yeah. So maybe I can reconnect that. Reconnect that. Get a ball on there. Yep. Let's have some fun. Uh, Alexi, yes, well, the Linux version is the one that I already have. It's going to now be up to me to produce the Windows and the MacOS versions. That's going to be the fun bit. By the way, Stuart, if you're watching this stream, thank you very much. This is actually, this is a nice sort of board to repair. Okay, that trace just keeps delaminating there. So I'm just going to cut it back so we don't have too much loose copper. I don't know what makes this sort of repair so satisfying, but... Uh, I know it was the same when it came to model aircraft too. Uh, I recall going to a few places and they would have damaged model aircraft you know, from a crash which was nothing unusual with model aircraft and I would take great pleasure in rebuilding the damaged ones and getting them flying again. And I'd do it for nothing but it was just fun. A sort of payment was the pleasure. Yeah. Fortunately, because that's sufficiently thick, I might just leave it there. Tony, in this case, I'm pretty sure they're tool damage. Accidents. I'd say it's from the fact that they probably didn't have a microscope, so they couldn't quite see what they were working with until too late they gave it a shot no I don't uh, and that's all good uh, I've got to put my nozzle on I'm not getting any airflow honestly it looks like a prosthetic leg or something Yes, the English head and hood. I don't exactly know why it wasn't working. I changed the name of the device file and it came up good. But I kind of have a feeling it's going to do it to me again later. Maybe when I reboot or something, I'm just not sure. But I have a feeling if it does come back, then yeah, I'm going to have to find out what's truly causing the fault. Repaired a matrix, mattress, two ten, or matrix. some dingbat wound this all up nice and tight I 
Oh, industrial drone, right. Okay, I didn't know anything about that. Pedro will. Or maybe. You know anything about those, Pedro? No, that is not tacked down properly. I'm well aware of it. I'm not... Oh, for goodness sake. Try to create a loop around them, and the loop sort of helps give us a better connection around that nub. Assuming I can even get the It's still not down properly, I know. What you can't see here is that I've got a bunch of connectors stopping me from getting in a good angle on this. I should be able to go a bit better now. Jay Cozzy, unofficial Mac thinks 99 is fair for your software. We're all right. And thank you for the five. That buys me a delicious tub of ice cream. Which right now my teeth are probably thinking, why man, why? Why do you do this to us? But my teeth don't get an opinion. I'm kind of butchering this though. It was supposed to be a, a much prettier configuration. I guess we sometimes feel that way when we look back on our dates of the past. Huzzah, that's what I was trying to do. I'm going to ruin it now because I want to drop it. Okay. Teslas, thank you very much for dropping in. Uh, no, not Buller, funnily enough. Um, I do like Buller, but um, that isn't the brand that I'll be getting. But it will be Australian. Yeah. I'm just cleaning up all these, get a better idea of what's underneath them. Is that chip even populated normally? I imagine it is not. English Hedgehog, that's probably about a tub and a half, that is, for the current exchange rates. Thank you. Man, you guys are going to make me fat. And then I'm going to be like micro and I'm going to have to have injections. I 
base com been soldering since 68 never used a fan oh boy yeah did you uh, eat solder as well I remember some friends I used to have and they would definitely chew on solder it was back then um, I was too young to know that it wasn't good for them or well, not great at least so um, I wonder what they're like nowadays we're talking 35 40 years ago I guess I'm finding this tip a little bit difficult to work with so I'm going to switch over uh, choices I might bring out the micro pencil it may be a bad choice I don't know but we'll find out they glow in the dark now hmm Now mercury isn't such of a problem. That's the thing that frustrates me a lot too is that you know people panic about mercury, elemental mercury. And so that's really not the problem. Uh, methyl mercury of course is a major problem. Methyl 2 mercury and you're a dead person, very dead person, very quickly. Okay, not quickly enough. Slow enough that you realize what you've done and to watch yourself descend into absolute madness but fast enough still there's a very sad story about one researcher who accidentally got um, methyl 2 mercury onto her she was wearing gloves but it just wasn't enough and by the time she realized what had happened, it was too late. They really couldn't do anything for her. That's got to suck as a researcher or a scientist or something to know that you basically doomed yourself like that. But yeah, methyl mercury 2, that's the bad stuff. I'm pretty sure it's 2. Okay, Nikita, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, maybe someone else out there remembers the story. Well, it's not really a story, it's... I guess it is, no. It's certainly not fict... It's not uh, fictitional, that's for sure. The only upside in those sort of scenarios is that usually you get some sort of safety procedure named after you. If that's any form of consolation. I don't think it actually ate through her gloves. As far as I know, it's just that the gloves were, t were um, permeable to methyl mercury. Because the gloves themselves were not... Um, yeah, I don't believe they were violated per se, as in they didn't degrade. They just didn't have the ability to inhibit methylmercury 2 from being... You know, it, it was porous to methylmercury, that's basically what it came down to. Okay, we've got a little ball there. So now everybody has to double glove. Karen Wittenheim. Right, that's the one. I'm oh, sorry, Karen Wittenheim. I suppose it depends if you're in America, then you pronounce it as a W. If you're from other places, you pronounce it as a V. I need to find a triple three O donor board simply so that I have a reference more than anything else. I can get the parts anywhere. 
but I want a reference. Was USA right? So it'd be vet. Ah, uh, sorry, it'd be w. Yeah. Pronounced as a W. You're in the wrong container. Yeah, one or two drops. It wasn't much at all. It's a very sad story. Well, sad to me. Jeez, I hope I do have a triple uh, 2915, 2850. Why do I have a 2015 in there? That's A1502s. Please be a triple three zero. You're not. You're another 2915. Did MCP something? You got to be a triple three zero, surely. No, 2849. Ah, triple three zero, second last one on the container. I'm kind of wondering what this one is. I have no idea where I got half of these junky boards from, but uh, we do have one triple three zero, thankfully. I don't recall making such bad donor board purchases. But I must have. I think that's the fun thing when you're a beginner and you don't know exactly what you're buying. You just sort of go, well, I'll take a one of everything off the menu, please. Christian, at least with radiation, there's always the faint hope that you might turn into something pretty cool. Very faint hope. Alright, so there's just the one resistor there. That's hilarious. So pulls PP3 VSA. Oh god, yeah, I can see why. That's a, that's a very important resistor. Uh, very important. And I'll show you why. Have a look at it. So what it does, it takes PP3 VO, uh, 3V3 SO, and it pulls up all the lines for all these power good signals. So without this being pulled up, none of those are going to ever come good. So, um, yeah, so that's an important one to lose. Yeah. Sometimes one resistor matters, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, God, I got. And sometimes someone sticks a six millimeter nozzle on my thingy. I know it was me. I know it was from last night. Funnily, la funnily enough, not labeled critical. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's implied critical by the nature of the circuit that it's in, isn't it? But yeah, as far as I know, that critical denotion on the schematic is not specifically referring to critical in the sense of the board won't work without it. I mean, if you get rid of enough of them, that will. For all we know, it could mean critical. Without this, we don't get our free account in the Cayman Islands. So yeah, I think we're going to have to just go by that judgment now. It's Cayman Islands critical. Right, 
Right, and I've got nowhere to put the flipping thing. You know what I could do? Is it the same line? That there goes up to here, doesn't it? I could literally put it up here. It's a shame I couldn't just... Yeah. Okay, just for the interim, while I build up the rest of this stuff, I'm just going to put it somewhere. I'll do. Okay, so there is a nub there. We just need a bit more wire here. Honest to God, I think I'm just going to run a wire across the board. Uh, especially since that one just ran off. This is where knowing the inner layers can be more useful. Because then you could decide, oh well, can I just put it up here, scratch away that, bring those together, or do I have to... Oh wait, not that one. That one, that would not be good, that one. But you get my point. Put it on R7962 and connect 3v3 to... Uh, let me have R7962... Yeah, you're sort of talking about up here. But like I said, I mean, it's like I'm just not sure where the circuit's going to go. But I suppose at least then I can use both the pads. But the trouble is, if anyone comes along in the future and looks at it, they're going to go, "What the hell is that doing there?" Sorry, just bear with this. Please stand by. Yeah, this is oh, that's all this power got up there. Right, yeah. Okay, now I'm getting the drift. Yeah, I tend to agree with your pen off. This time. Just want to check something. that it must be going through the I was trying to see where the all sys power good was actually coming up from certainly not from that resistor that I just lost oh and I've melted the right that one's out of here nice knowing you fellas guess I better get another one if I run... Oh, oh, 10k. <laughs> Why am I worried about that? 10k 402. Sure, we can find another one of those. 
not in the IP7 box there. It's going to be a laugh when I don't find him. Whew, found him. It would have been embarrassing. Do you ever use hot tweezers? No, I don't use hot tweezers. I don't have hot tweezers. And I got to admit, I'm sort of not overly compelled to get them either. I mean, they could be a nice to have, but I have a strong feeling that they're more probably useful on iPhones in general, but perhaps a waste of money for this sort of work in general for me. Um, I don't want to use the hot air too much because I'm already starting to melt that connector slightly. So we're just going to manually solder this in. The downside is it, it will sit up ever so slightly proud because I was too lazy to take the excess solder off the pads. But it's a resistor, it's 10k, it's not getting enough flux. I'll do fine. If I was to get hot tweezers, I'd probably be getting the hacker, uh, not the hacker ones, the JBC ones. They seem to look the best. They seem to have the better tips on them. Alright, so I want to put 3v3 SO on the inner run. You know, I actually could just put this diagonally across pin off. Now I'm going to have to use hot air. I should have thought about this a little bit better. Great, my favourite little heat, heat shield seems to have drifted off somewhere. Ah, there it is. I jumped the empty pads at the base of the chip. There okay. we yeah, alright, fine. You win on that one. A game of aesthetics, isn't it? Okay, let's watch Paul not get to... Okay. I was just about to say, I'm not going to be able to bridge those, but what do you know, it happened.
Now really I don't need that trace anymore, so I'll get rid of that. And we're gonna have to put that under a blob of green so that people don't mistake what we're not what we're doing with it. Okay, so that's one bit done. What else we got? 7964. Uh, 7964. Oh, great, you're up by the. up in here somewhere. Right. That's it there, 7964. Fortunately, it doesn't look like too much trouble. Famous last words. Hey, Retro Drum. Check continuity of losses, power good, and three view on the resistor just to be sure. I uh, probably should. But I will do that once I've done this. Just remind me, all right? Got lucky. This wasn't far off from where the they put the uh, killer drill bit through. My tweezers are jammed under the microscope. Oh, that's better. That certainly got mushed. I think they must have been using that as a test pad. Maybe that's what happened. The test pad and then the microscope, uh, not the microscope, the multimeter lead jumped. All right, so we better go back and chest, 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 chest. No, not chest. Test continuity and make sure we do have our lines going where we want them to for this bodge fix that we've done. So where we've blobbed and crossed, we want to see. Oh, I cannot speak today. We want to see that it goes to three V forty two. Ah, uh, three V forty two. Why do I even speaking for? I give up. Three V three S O. Just trying to find a place on the board a little bit further up okay it looks like on the other side of the connector further up okay this resistor here should have it and we're good there you go And all sys power good mm. on the other side of there's the mm. uh, 
Alright, this test pad here should be all this power good. And we're good. I hope that SMC is okay. Okay, so that one's been done. That was 79.64, just marking that off. U9950 got taken off, it seems. U9... Ah, it's one of those little four... Holy shoot. Yeah, better not. <laughs> Leave notes like that. Use a uh, micro fish. <laughs> okay, they're fluffed up nicely, so that's good. We should be able to hot air that straight down. Alright, fortunately it's not BGA, so that's good. Not so not sure why I was surprised it's not BGA, I mean there's not too many of those silicon glass ones around at the moment here uh, this sort of uh, this sort of year model and at least these plastic ones the epoxy casing ones they're far more durable you know they don't have a complete hissy fit if you look at them wrong Trying hard not to melt that connector, of course. Yeah, it'd be good if we could all clone Pernov's knowledge. Use that database that he's managed to collect up in there. Shoot. That actually, it's crooked, but it should actually be okay. But you know, I can't live with it. I still can't live with it. Perfect. Yeah, what was that movie? Johnny Depp one? Um, what was that called? Transcendence or something? Q9607 is our next victim. Q9607. Thank goodness this person kept track of everything, eh? What are you? You're a six pad next to the connector and. around here somewhere where you were ah yeah there you are that worries me a little bit but hopefully it's okay well 
what I find frustrating about a lot of movies like that and things like um, uh, Law Abiding Citizen is that they cop out in the end and always take the uh, they always take the easy way out in terms of social acceptance of the movie Law Abiding Citizen should not have ended like it did I mean, the guy was smart enough to do all that stuff and yet somehow he doesn't protect the entrance to his lair. It's like, come on. Not that I'm a great fan of Gerard Butler, but uh, yeah, I always felt that movie was a complete letdown. Thoughts on the MD XJT 4411 server control station? Oh, God. Yeah, that one's beyond my league. Oh, joy! This one's cracked and damaged, so we'll have to find another one of those. So there's a few of you around. You're a double MOSFET package. So we'll copy the package name, search, find a part. Oops. Twenty nine thirty six. Yep, yeah, I'll go for that. I know I've got 2936 boards. Ah. Well, at least I would find them easier if I actually marked them. Twenty nine thirty six, and it's my first ever donor board that I purchased. I still have it. Uh, let's see. Down by the Yeah, it looks like it. It's pin one there. Realistically, at this point, it probably would have been cheaper for me to just get another working triple three O board. But you don't find the triple three Os around very often. Okay, pin one's top right. Oh, whoops. And so we need to be bottom right. So like that. It's interesting hearing how people are getting money with this coronavirus thing. I'm getting diddly squat. No. 
not that I'm really looking for coronavirus money, but uh, it's just interesting that you know, just okay. We've got a missing resistor there too, so but transfer that. Probably on the list. 96.76. Yes, it is. Yeah, I guess that's the advantage. We are still working. I mean, I haven't been this busy in quite a while, so certainly the coronavirus has brought about a resurgence in people getting their things fixed. Which is great. All right, that feels like lead-free uh, lead solder that I just dropped that onto. I had that gritty, non-flowing property about it. It could also have just been a dry joint, but well, we'll find out one way or another anyway. In the last 15 years, I don't think there's ever been one handout that I've managed to get up my hands on. The last one that I had a chance of getting was. Uh, the Australian Global Financial Crisis Stimulus and I missed out on that because of my own dumb fault because I didn't put my tax return in soon enough so I didn't get that one okay we're almost done let's see C7970 C7970. Okay, the C7970 is one that I spotted before. That was, it was uh, a bit wobbly. It's pretty sure it's that one there that came off. Oh, wait, no, it's this one here. Or is it? No, Paul, you were right. That there. Let's see, World Tech Fix, I do business with repairs, home lab, and just having to get more and more MacBook book repairs than ever during the last few weeks. Yeah, exactly, World Tech Fix, it's the same here. And the nice thing is that most of them are things like 1466s, 1398s, 1502s, all the boards that you actually don't mind repairing. Actually, I don't even mind 1708s, and I've got to admit, I know a lot of people are going to judge me for this harshly, but I do like the 1932s. I'm sorry, I just like them, alright? Forgive me. Something about the 1932 that I like. Hey, Experiments Nest, how's it going? So we've got to get, I think, I'm trying to decide whether it's an end cap of the cap that was there or it's something else that's damaged. Now the 1708 is not too bad for the fact that at least you can, the drive can be taken out of it. I am thinking of the right one, aren't I? 
It's the last one of the ones that you can remove the drive from. The 13 inch profile, fairly simple board. It doesn't have lots of complex layers of parts to remove to you know, get the board out or anything like that. All right, so that trace has been mashed. It's a little tricky because yeah, we need that. But I don't want to really move this too much. Well, that's one way to do it. Jay Cosy, you made an adapter for that uh, crazy edge drive. Can you send me a message and let me know about that? Will that let you read those drives use an external connector or something? Or does it not work that way? Is it just a case that the edge connector is all the normal um, SATA lines but they've just added a few extras and moved them around? Is that what the case is with that? I mean, generally, I've got to admit, I've just found it easy to find another 1708 and just uh, transfer it across that way. Okay, so it's this little cap here that we want. Mr. Mac, you're doing your second ever MacBook. Oh, cool. I'm glad to hear that. And it's interesting that you're only doing your second. I don't mean that in a bad way, by the way. You're only on your second, but you've already bought Flex Board View. Most people sort of tend to use Open Board View for quite a while. And then when they're doing about two or three a week, they buy Flex Board View. Because usually around about the two or three a week mark, that's when the pain starts to come in with getting sick of having to jump back and forth. <coughs> Sorry. So it's interesting that you just went straight for it. I mean, I'm very thankful for that, believe me. All flexible view sales go towards buying a house. Hey, NW Tesla. Tesla, sorry. Maybe I can get Satoshi. My God, he's sitting going crazy. Uh, because there's a, you know, you're not going to have a huge market for that, but there's certainly a few people out there who'd want it. Oh, damn it! I've got the heat on that. Okay, it's not rottenly damaged, but um, I'm. I'm disappointed in myself for being distracted and not seeing that. Now, this is tilted over a little bit, but I'm sort of limited in what's sort of... Uh, how nice I can make this here, because that track has actually been gouged out. So the fact that it is filleted over and connecting is something we should be happy for. Well, Pernov, you've updated Open Board View now, haven't you? That's right. Open Board View has had a refresh, so it's worth going and have a look. I've personally been banned from doing any updates on Open Board View because I keep putting C code into it, and that makes Pernov cry. Damage the printed circuit solder pad for 79.67. All right. Sean, thank you very much for the Australian 3099. That's a hell of a lot of ice cream for me. You're trying to give me diabetes? Thank you very much. No, really. It's always difficult to decide what to say other than thank you. So, 7967. I mean, I suppose you could always start up an argument and say, 
what? Why that? Oh wait, 7967, right. We've already dealt with all that. Right, replacement 10k, yep, yep, yep. Okay, that is everything at this point that was damaged during the original testing process. So now we can see if it even gives us some kind of life. Small amount towards your house, everyone needs a castle. That I most certainly agree, and particularly the kitties. Um, we are running into a fair bit of strife, trying to keep everything under control, but we're quite close. I am. Um, I've got about another, let's say about eight thousand to go, and then we will be. Assuming the banks go with it, that's always the trouble. Look, I can come up with a deposit, and I can save for a deposit, but will the banks actually go for it? I mean, I'm going for 20% here. And I'm a first home buyer. So I could potentially get like the government guarantor scheme or whatever. But I think that's only if you're stuck down at or towards 5% deposit. But I'm already up at 20 or heading for 20. So that's going to basically do nothing for me. Unfortunately, the good scheme where it was like they'll give you 14,000 or whatever it was, 10,000. It doesn't seem to apply anymore. That sucks. So once again, I'm missing out. Once again. Yeah, that makes safe scene much better days. We will put a fan in there. And we will also put a chipmunk in here. And I suspect we still probably won't get anything happening though. But it's worth a shot. Like I said, I have a strong suspicion the SMC is going to need replacing. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Yeah, MGUI is actually something I'm really glad that Pelnov um, introduced that to me. I really quite enjoy it. It takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of the way it works. But at the end of the day, it makes it very easy to build up GUI applications rather quickly if you need to have text and stuff. If you don't need text then fine, just use SDL and do it the hard way, like I do. Okay, let's see how we go. Seventeen million. That's very disappointing, Paul. Seriously? Seventeen? Come on. You can do better than that. So it gives me two milliamps. Oh, that's marvellous. Okay, well, we've got a green light, so that's a good start. 15 milliamp. Sometimes... I'll try a different MagSafe connector, just in case. Oh, where are they? <clears throat> and Paul naturally opens up the container that does not contain MagSafe for that model. Bravo. What about you? Now you got more chance. I have to short it to start on triple three O. No, I don't think you do. I thought the triple three O should auto start. I thought you had to go way back to the twenty twenty six ten, is it? Before you have to do that? I could get my numbers wrong, but I know 20, even the 2936 auto starts, I think. Or is that the first of the ones that don't? I mean, I could be wrong, but I just always thought that these would auto start. Wow, every single one of these has got an X on it, which is not a good sign.
Okay, so which one's this? This is the twenty-five sixty-five. Just checking it. Uh, twenty-five sixty-five. Uh, visual artifacts on the oh, that's because I've accidentally covered it with another another um, window. And that's actually OBS having trouble with it. Uh, it should be good now. I saw three hundred just jump up then. No, I saw 300 jump up. Not you. Yes, Chloride is the original creator of Open Board View, someone of whom I've never actually had the pleasure of directly speaking to. Always is a mystery. Try the other way. Ow. Well, we've got 300 milliwatts going in there somewhere. Okay, that's this. Let's bring out the thermal camera and see if anything comes up. Just in case it's pulsing or something. I know, wishful thinking. Uh, no, I'm getting green, or well, I was getting green light. Intermittently. Uh, green light. And as far as I know, that should be a genuine... That... That's also subjective. Sometimes you can get a green light just by pure bad luck. That, that's warming up very slightly, is the SMC. I'll get my own hands out of the way. You turn on the board with the battery plugged in the first time. Okay. So we've got 270 milliwatts. Now this thing has a resolution of 0 0.1 degrees centigrade, so... And that light's gone out. 
So yeah, picking up point one is actually not a bad difference. But now we're down to point three six. Come on. I'm being lazy here. It definitely takes a jump at the start. Yeah. It's not even getting 15 milliamp per of it's When I say a jump it's like 300 milliamp. And then it uh, nothing showing up there. Try and mag save for their next. I don't know if I've got one. They've all had relationships. Okay, what's this? Nothing's really jumping out. My hands are hotter than the thing. Pull is the problem, yes. Yeah, let's try to... I've actually got a green light again. Anything that is coming up, and that's just below the battery. It's down here. It's somewhere here. But I doubt that would be the problem anyway. Uh, let's see. Battery, 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 battery. Yeah, better, 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 better. Battery's not going to fit. Okay, we're up. So what the hell's that? Let's have a look. Whoops, so I updated my software and I got the crosshairs slightly off. Okay, there's something just here. That's a big chip there. That is definitely getting hot. And it is running, you can't see it, but uh, that's definitely getting very hot. I'm just waiting now to see if we get Chipmunk giving us any USB. I don't think it will. Crosshairs are adjusting for window. I know what I've done wrong. As I said, this is the version that I've rewritten from scratch. And I have forgotten to factor in an offset. I should actually just do that right now. Because otherwise it's going to annoy the dillies out of me. CD Let's see GVIM source Draw crosshairs, okay. Ok, 
Okay, we're gonna have to quit the one that we have running now. Make the new one. Run it again. And fire it up again, see if this time it actually does. Yeah. Well, that's one way to find bugs, isn't it? Use your own software. There we are, crosshairs now work. And if we, so that's the chip there. Where's the one there? Thank you very much, Crosshairs. Doing your job properly this time. Best of all, I fixed the bug. So, who wants to guess what that chip is? Because I'm thinking ISL or something, maybe? Get this out of the way. Can't wait to get this proper USB C cable. Oh, it's Max. Hello, Max. What do you do? Max 15, right. No, it's not the ISL. Oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong chip, aren't I? No? No, the first one I marked was the TPS, which isn't that one. This is the one that's getting hot. Not that it's not allowed to get hot, but it is a little warmer than it should be. And that's U7400. Which is a CPU AGVX uh, generator. That's not going to be fun. What do you produce? Well, that getting hot isn't going to be good. Hmm. Yeah, Objective C is not the most pleasant of languages. I don't know what they were quite trying to achieve when they created Objective C. And I'm not sure if they even did achieve anything. I suppose they were just trying to come up with some sort of object oriented C ish ish stuff, but it's not even that close. Anyway, I'm going to shut up because I don't know enough about Objective C. So I don't know if this is actually going to be the fault or what, but it's getting hot a little more than it should. So we're going to take what's hot. I have a feeling it's probably feeding a short somewhere else. But we'll just swap it over and see what happens. Arnold, it can get down to 150 millimeters. The stand that I've got there, that is about 200 millimeters. So I want to create a stand for it that has some built-in lighting as well, because one of the weak points I've definitely noticed is that the visual camera does not have very good light resolution capacity. So you want to get a few hundred lumens extra pounding down on whatever you're looking at. This chip's a little hard to get off, eh?
Yeah, well, tick, that's what I'm kind of thinking. It's probably something shorter down line. I mean, it could be the chip itself. But uh, we'll just do the swap first, see what happens. I could bring out the multimeter, do the responsible thing, and actually test my lines, but, um, well, I'm just a lazy, lazy man. And there's more fun doing it this way for entertainment purposes, I suppose. But I would not deny the fact that I am a lazy man doing it this way. Ironically, it'll probably mean I have to do more work, though. This is one thing these tips are really good for, and that is for redoing the... Yeah, as I say that, I'll muck it up. Redoing the pads on these QFN type packages. Just needed a bit more flux. I'd imagine that you should be able to use... LED, particularly if you can get a good con constant current source, not one that's a madhouse flickerer. Oh man, you know, I jinxed myself there, didn't I? I said how nice that tip was for doing this sort of work, and now look what's happening. I'll have to do. We still need to clean out the center pad though. That's harder. Because we do not have the thermal mass. No thermal mass. Bottom left corner pin. What? The only trick is, these chips aren't directly running any power, like high amounts of power, they're just con you know, controlling the MOSFETs and whatnot. So, they shouldn't be getting that warm to start with. Ah, oh, come on, lift up. That is one very hefty ground pad. Anyway. Uh. We'll just do the swap -roo anyway. And if nothing else, I'll prove a point. Prove a point like Q4150 on an iPhone. I think that's what it is, Q4150. The VCC bat versus mainline MOSFET that always gets hot whenever there's a fault down line. This chip, funnily enough, looks like it's in better condition.
It's also a good example of why, even if it's seemingly a simple job, you really should never cut your price down. Because look how long this has taken, and that's with the guide as well as to what's been done. Um, that's hilarious. It's still throwing two milliamps. Where are you burning that up? The behavior is slightly different now. Could be just because of the heat. Let's have a look around, measure some voltages. Three seems fine. What are you? No, oh, well, that's five years three, so. Probably makes sense. Since we don't have anything up here anyway. Right. SMC is dead. Most likely dead. Not a good day. Yeah. Which is probably why when it uh, does fire up, it's running full fan spin. Uh. So do we want to see if the thermal camera shows a different picture now? No, oh, we don't need to see that. What's the vote? Sure, it's not the MagSafe. Yeah, I mean the MagSafe can be a little dodgy, but once it, the battery itself, once it's connected and it's still misbehaving, it kind of seems a little suspicious. I would actually like to have it so that this infrared camera is permanently mounted on a uh, something like a um, uh, what do they call it? Some kind of arm. Yeah, you want you you want your USB C voltage, don't you? Blacked out. Plenty of things for me to still to fix. Okay. Okay, let's plug the mag safe in, see what happens. The only trouble with having it near the scope camera for me would be that it would, um, I think that's the SMC cooking up right there. Is it? Something else. The camera is not happy with the connection. No, it's not the SMC, it's something else. Where is the SMC? It's over here. I do have an auto restart on the 
device. There we go. There. And it is the SMC. Yeah. Now they're all getting warm. Nothing's really standing out, so that's probably a good thing. We've got a cluster of heat there. But it looks like the SMC is having a good run. Uh, let's see, we can just momentarily mask it. And the fans are going absolutely flat out. That's how you cheat. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to have to do. That's the G-Max, is it? This one, peeling off. I can't tell without my glasses. There's my glasses. I was assuming it was the SMC based on the fact that it was edge bonded. My bad. Oh crap. Damn it. Yeah, I didn't check the other side. Ah, oh, check that voltage. God damn. Oh. I forget which one's the GPU coil voltage again. No, definitely not you guys. I had it just before. No, that was it. Uh, it's GPU feedback, uh, frame buffer. Equal. No, I think we've got nothing on Vcool. We're actually charging according to this. Okay, we've got 0.899, and that's on vCore GPU, yeah. So we do have that back. And it's running now. Without the battery, that is. But, um, let's have a look at the others. Oh, shit. Much swearing. Getting tired. Yes, I know that that's. I know I replaced the CPU, but. Not the vehicle. I don't know. I was just noticing before I didn't have the GPU vehicle. I was just. I wasn't inferring that it's what I'd replaced. Uh, although I can understand why it came across that way.
PCH is nice and warm. And that's not just from reflection, I don't think. Yep, anyway. Uh, let's see, so we're going to go for SMC replacement. Oh, yeah, I thought I did check. Oh, Jesus. I think we've had enough fun with the infrared camera for tonight. We kind of got, we got spoiled last night. When everything just worked in an instant. Oh, my crotch cam. Fantastic. Oh, dear God. Chris Long's here. What do you want, Chris Long? Shouldn't you be off somewhere patting a dingo? You're just here to watch and enjoy. Hmm. Right. Kind of like the same way I watch and enjoy Lewis do SMCs. It's in a very not nice way. Why does this board not make sense? Ah, that's why. No, I've got no CPU. Or yeah, I've got nothing there. Diddly squad on CPU V core AGX. Is that the one I'm after? I hate not doing this every day. I'll try this one over here. Nothing. Yeah, well, I just went to the other one. It's also still got nothing peeling off. So this one here should be V core SO and we've got nothing. One VF five, yep, that's fine. HS computing. Oh, you're a bunch of idiots, you realise. We've been sitting this whole time, we're on 1229 instead of 1256. Oh wait, that's HS, yeah, which is G3 hot. CSMC. Which is pretty much what I thought it was going to be right at the start, but then we just had to run around, didn't we? Run around and do stuff. Run around and waste my time. Run around and keep me up till the wee hours of the morning where I become a cranky gremlin. Yeah, top SMC. Ah, oh, well, text fix. Sorry, I didn't see that. My apologies. You gotta love it how in chat you can miss the important things. Well, Pernov, you're probably right. There probably is something else going on. 
but yeah, kind of lacking alternatives right now. But I do agree. I will take your bet and agree that you are great. They put the SMC ranks at PCH. This is is it PCH or MCP PCH. Check PP bus G3 hot just with mag stuff. All right. Uh, do you want that with it up and running, or do you want that without anything being on? Like I can just plug it in like that and check it. Yes, it is after midnight. I mean, I gave it a green light, but that doesn't mean anything when it comes to SMCs. Twelve point six. All right. So we're actually fine until. So we get time to do some short detection. ISL Battery is charging so normally have low until 6 Oh right So this is the bad thing about doing this at this time of the night with everybody is that I um, <laughs> You start to make mistakes like that You start to forget to cross check You start to just blindly go down a path assuming that you just sort of like oh yeah we're gonna do this it'll be fine so what are we thinking dead CPU oh yeah Jay Cosy I actually get that a little too often like it's a simple fix it's like hell no anytime anyone has ever said simple fix it usually is not it just seems to be the nature of making such a declaration let's see what our resistance to ground is for the CPU lines Check ISL output to SMC. Well, the CPU seems to be coming up all right, so ISL output to SMC. When you say check, do you mean yeah. any pin in particular? Obviously, do you mean the voltage? Well, ISL. U7000 Check your horse's power, good now. Alright. Okay, at least we know where that one is. It's in the hack job place where we put it. 
Uh, Pernov's getting serious now. Pernov um, does his repairs vicariously through me as a robot. I'm the robot. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we do not have all this power good. Got 3.3. Wait, we don't even have 3.3. Something's not coming up there. Let's try that again. We do not have a 3 3. Uh, so I'm going to have to bootstrap this board to get to uh, jump up. I think it just... It's definitely got some sort of intermittent crap going on, that's for sure. I have to turn the board upside down. Cha la 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 la. I put their mag safe back on and it's definitely trash. I just wanted to test that. So their mag safe is 100% definitely trash. Maybe. I'll put the one that's slightly dubious on instead. It seems no matter how many of these I buy, I always end up with dead ones. That one does seem to be more consistent, I guess, so that's good. And that is charging current too. Okay, 3-3. Three, three. All this power good's been held at a funny value there, 0 0.379. That's um, not really a good value. Uh, Pernov, I don't know if that trace burned. I well, yeah, I don't know whether it was burned or whether it was knocked off. It's hard to say. I would probably say burn, though. I'm guessing with the battery change. Yeah. <sighs> Anyone want to take a shot at what we should try replace? Anybody? 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 I'm sort of just floundering in the dark here right now. I'll have a look at U7000 SMB reset. Let's see what's going on. Is there a turn on off button on this? Uh, nope. I sold all my good ones. Let's see. SMC on off L. OK, 
Okay, there is one up on the other side of the board. Oh wait, no, no, no. It's by the keyboard. There it is. Ah, uh, Bob McCavey, sounds like you're Lewis Rossman in disguise, eh? Everything's fixed with a... And that doesn't turn it on. I haven't even checked my 3v42 area. I assumed it would have some life given that we were getting you know, green light at least. Okay, let's check the SMC line coming out of or going into. Point three, three point three. Well, SMC reset L is three point three, so we're okay there. SA rails time. I just find it interesting that it's not starting without the battery, which would tend to imply that. Uh, what am I missing that causes that? No, Chris, this is an actual job that I'm losing money on fast. Okay, SMC resets 3.3 .3 on that. Customer changed the battery and everything went downhill. No, I don't have a um, DSO, sorry. Surely not. No, it wouldn't make any sense because it wouldn't start after that. Sorry, for a moment that I had a, I had a moment of stupidity thinking maybe it's the fuse, and I realised no, the fact that I can take the battery away, and it runs means that it's definitely not the case.
The SMC can be half dead, that does happen quite a bit. Yeah, I just looked at the blocking days, they seem to be okay. You're talking about the merging ones? These ones? This one here? 2.9 It's coming up slowly, but no. Uh, they're both point two, which is pretty much well. Well, I suppose the problem, the other problem we've got is that even when we do get it up and running, the CPU doesn't come to life. Uh, those pull-ups are fine. Check those two voltage divider resistors for... Yeah, that's true, because sometimes they do go quite high. Oh wait, which ones are you talking about? Forty seven's right. Five point one, let's see if it's okay. Yeah, they're fine. Now do I get a good three V forty two? That's the other thing. Just going to see if this dips out. I mean, it's, yeah. well, it seems pretty steady. When you connect a battery, you provide additional current. You can measure the current, current sense resistors. Yeah, probably not quickly enough. BIOS swap suggestions now. But the trouble is, yeah, we should be starting off this even without the BIOS. I mean, even if um, we're after something that's different between the MagSafe in and the battery in. It took me way too long to talk. Yeah, so we've got 12.6 still. I'm just going over the schematic and board view, that's all. Yeah. Hey Michael Chen, how are you going? Um, I mean, I would sooner be leaning on the SMC than anything else. Or maybe the ISL. Yeah, okay, let's, let's just do a blind replacement. I know this doesn't r is not a good way of doing things. 
But um, I'm tired. I want to go home. Oh, wait, I am home. <laughs> uh, well. I'm tired. I just want to now throw random shots in the dark when I shouldn't. And the reason why random shots in the dark aren't, aren't a good thing is because you can, if you're unlucky, make things worse. If this doesn't fix it, then SMC is what we'll go for next. Like I said, I really don't like the fact that it's right next to that PCH. Now, usually if we do have a battery mistake, then it does typically half kill the SMC or anything that's on those I2C lines shared with the battery. But it's just overall, it's just weird. Very weird. Like, losing my solder again. Yep, too late. ISL's off. Like I said, shots in the dark. Not recommended. It will cause many people to have seizures. And I completely understand. Yeah, definitely brain off moments right now. Absolutely 100% brain off moment. Please do not follow this advice if you are thinking this is how you can repair stuff. This is what happens when you just basically a few short steps away from table flipping because you're too tired. So do not repair when tired. You're probably fine, we've just got a blown up CPU or something, something fun. If an L turns up, we'll blame him. And to think I... Uh, the other board that we had earlier is... That's probably the V-Regs on that, that are probably faulty. And I'm really not looking forward to replacing those. It's not that they're specifically a hard chip, it's just their proximity to the CPU that gets things a little a little hair raising at times. Anella's here, we're all doomed. Hello Anel, how are you? Was your titanium were your titanium rods divining that you had to turn up here? That's what you should sell that service. Titanium rod diviner. God damn this can't get the angle under the microscope. Yep, I know there's a short. A bridge rather. And I know this is really bad. I'm just gonna push that chip up. <laughs> it's it's severely bad. It needs to have a, about a half a pitch push. I'll do it. <sighs> no, I don't really have an aversion to um, SMC. In fact, 
No, I probably would sooner do SMCs than what most people would be willing to. I thought we said we did half a push there, we didn't. No, they're not shorted, so it's okay. Jay Cozzy, that does not sound like a fun customer. That really does not sound like fun. Wireless charging. I mean, I know we have that option, but even still. Alright, here we go. Wow, oh, what do you know? Nothing's changed. The SMC time. God, I hate having to do that. It's just in a... It's in a bad spot. That's all. Well, to the only trouble I find is that I just, you know, the lead-free solder is just so yuck. My big tip is don't do it when you're half asleep. Professional people aren't, professional hecklers aren't here at the moment. They could really be taking strips off me. I should actually be upstairs enjoying some midnight bacon and eggs. What am I doing? I'm down here in the pit. entertaining folk that I've never met. it up. Honestly, the real madman part here is the fact that I'm doing this near freaking whatever that is, PCH, MCP, whatever. The thin metal shield won't do a hell of a lot, but it just should stop some of the indirect airflow. That came off way too easy. Way, way, way too easy. I barely had gotten started with that. No, oh well. Get rid of this crap. Put down some more crap.
flood it with even more crap. Uh, the only trouble sometimes with super fine solder is that it can take a while to fill up the soldering tip. Okay. And then if I can find my self closing. Ah, oh, found them. Self closing tweezers and my tech spray wick that Chris Long hates. Cover the process with captain tape. Now, yeah, this, this little metal shield does a pretty good job. This little metal shield has saved me many an iPhone 6 backlight, 6S backlight circuits. We understand each other. Perfect. The trouble I find with Captain Tape is that being the tape by its nature, of course, it's going to stick generally to the device that you're trying to protect and that you're not going to get that air gap between the tape and what you're trying to protect. And it's not absolutely essential, but it is a great help if you can have a millimetre or two air gap. That really saves things more than tape directly. So the little metal shield that I use, you'll notice it's got you know, all these teeth and whatnot. And so by doing that, it keeps it slightly up, off from whatever I'm trying to protect. And that helps it quite a lot. Alright, uh, that's nice and clean. We only got one shot at this one. Um ration what you mean in terms of the way I do it or in terms of the look of the actual wick I also use goot wick but for this sort of work I tend to use the chip quick stuff or whatever what is it not chips quick tech spray tech spray uh. Joseph King, possibly it could. I'll have to do an experiment and find out. Just realise I'm doing this at way too high a temperature, so I have to do it from a distance. I have to do it like Bette Midler. From a distance, you can use 420 degrees and not kill your SMC and not kill your fingers. Ta da! I still don't have my 0.35mm balls and I still don't have a bunch of parts that I'm waiting for in China. I don't know what to do about some of the jobs I've got sitting in the queue here because they're just not going anywhere. And unfortunately the parts that I want, I can't even get donor boards um, in Australia. There was one person who had a board and theirs was dead. It was in their computer and it was dead. But I just couldn't get my hands on that board it wasn't going to work out which is a real shame because I had some much needed parts now I'm going to be trying to get this off a little quicker because the pre the that these come off a lot faster than the 1466s or anything even
Uh, it looks like it has a fighting chance. Oops, somebody forgot to put the SMC stencil away. Booted turkey waiting, yeah, 16 weeks, crikey. Uh, it's getting to about what I'm looking at here too. Uh, is that a defect in there? Please don't be a defect. Oh, thank goodness, that's just um, edge bonding. Now I'm going to take this chip out and I'm going to solder it direct to the board like that with no balls at all on it. I'm not really. I have seen people who do that and it's like, that's madness. It's madness beyond even Sparta. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just rubbing off all the excess trash It's just a lot easier with gloves on. And I'm also at the same time reaching around looking for my toothbrush. So I can do this. Get the excess flux out of there. So it doesn't become a sort of a boiling cauldron of bubbles and gases. So yeah, that's what we want. Nice, clean receptacle. Hey Pedro, how's it going? Too tired to be joking. Was I joking? <laughs> Madness starts. Alright. So, no, we still had some flux back there. Now I need to clean the stencil because I was a naughty boy and didn't do it before. So just use the same process, rub it between the fingertips with the gloves on, don't do it without gloves. Not unless you want to have a shortened lifespan, which is fine if that's what you want I guess. Yes, yes, I've got the old SMC still, just in case nothing changes. And then I know I'll have, I'll either have two working 3330 SMCs or I'll have two dead ones. I'm just not sure which way. Okay, now we put our two corner balls on. And since I know that all of the balls that I've been dropping lately are 0.35s, I can get away with doing what I'm doing now, just randomly picking some balls out of the pit. But I do have to drop 
the hot air way down to iPhone snowflake type levels. Don't want to offend the iPhones. Hey, even that's too much. Come on, guys. Man, that was starting to become some Chris Long bull. Someone forgot to put the flux down. It doesn't really matter which pad it lands on. I still don't have my balls. Listen to all those people snickering behind their screens. I've probably got about two, maybe three SMCs worth of 35s left. And that's it. And then I've either got to find a better way of not losing my balls over the edge here. Uh huh. Yeah, uh huh. Why don't you just stick something there, Paul? Oh, crud. Well, that's an excess. And that's why I really need to get myself a nice desktop CNC system so I can perfect what I know I want to do. Use a plastic straw. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'm not going to use. I'd be worried I'd just snort those suckers right back up with a plastic straw. The trouble is, it's the velocity that they have when they come down the ramp. They're like kids on a water slide that's too long and too fast, and you can't stop them at the end, and they just plow straight in to the trucks driving down the highway and everybody just looks at each other and goes oops oh well we can always have more babies I think we're good. Except when that electrostatic crap happens. I 
Yep, I think that's good. Now you're not water sliding into trucks, Chris. You're just water sliding in your yard, and your yard just happens to be not too far from a major highway. And then you make it too fast on the slide, and you overshoot where you're supposed to stop, and then uh, you're, you're overthinking it, Chris. Way to kill the joke. Way to kill the joke. Good on you, mate. No more dingoes for you. This frickin' stencil wants to bend away. I saw you doing that, you little mongrels. Melt and deform, you little bastards. Now that I've probably waited too long and my fluxing process isn't going to work as well. Yeah, I've lost a ball already. I don't know where he went to. Then again, maybe it was never there. Now, hopefully these don't get all excited and jump out now. Because it completely defeat the point of what I was doing. One little bugger there that doesn't want to find its place. There's actually two. That's okay. We can remind them. We've got a special little remind them poker tweezers. one there. I'm actually not 100% convinced. And there's that ball that we were missing. It was hanging out on the tip of the flux. Uh, that's better. <sighs> hey, Ben Duffy, holy hell. How you going, Ben? I haven't seen you in a very long time. Nice to see you still with us. But what are you doing up at this hour? Yeah, they're looking pretty good. Mm, there's a... Yeah, there's one ball off the edge there that looks like it wants to... be a bit of a kamikaze. I don't know why, but this one here is an... Just looking a bit funny for me. Mm. 
Nie ma wielkie. So there's a small amount of flux. Remember, I don't like a lot of flux on SMCs because of the tendency to just ride the wave of freshly melted flux right off their alignment straight into where you don't want them to go. Just like kids on water slides into trucks. I suppose I better check that is the right orientation. It's suck if I put it on in an event. Oops. Bottom left, bottom left, we're good. Um, I kind of put that down there and it kind of looks about right to me, so I'll just nudge it so that I push it out of place. Yep, SMCs like the great sea turtle dudes. back up to our full blast temperature. Actually, I might just turn the board around because at least this way then that the hot air is being blown away from the PCH area. I wonder how many times this one's going to play chicken with me. I actually don't know if I believe that went down. It, the SMCs on this feel very funny compared to what I'm used to. It's slightly compressed on the front corner there, which does not please me one bit. What doesn't help is I can't get a good view anywhere else. But overall it does seem intact. It was dancing around, Chris. I mean, I gave it a good three to five seconds of dancing and it just seems to sometimes settle down on that slightly off-pitch kilter. Hey, Vladimir's here. Nice. Uh, let's see how we go first. I'm not the sort of person who likes to nudge those chips much. I will do it, but I try not to do it. Just fractionally. Um, so here we go. <sighs> Probably nothing changed. Yep, sweet fuck all changed. Still the same. 
Okay. I think it's too late now. I really am going to have to just pack it in for the night. We'll give it a nudge, but um, the, um, the chances of it giving the same behavior because of the lack of a nudge is close to zero. Yes, Anel is here. Ding dong. The CPU is dead. Probably a bit much flux. What do I know? But it's actually amazing how fast these ones heat up. So that's dancing. Now, Vladimir, yeah, all I was basically saying is I'm going to, I'm going to be selling the software for the camera viewer. I'm seeing things in my vision now, that's not good. Like I think I'm seeing a cat walk past or something like that. There's no cats in here. <laughs> Absolutely no cats. Yeah, and I gotta eat and what is it, one thirty? Yeah, one fifteen. Yeah. I will attack this again in the morning and I will, you know, maybe I have a brilliant thing, but um, I'm really losing hope on this at this rate. There just hasn't really been that feel of there being a concise reason for something. We can't even get a consistent bloody mag safe. Uh, something else is definitely at play. It starts up, shuts down, no falls. Uh, right, that's great, Paul. Just ruin your battery. Fortunately, it was my battery, not the customer's. So, no harm. Interesting, I don't even get a fan spin now. Is this, this what my life's been reduced to? Charging, no fan spin. Did I do have, did I kill the fan? Uh. Well, the fan kicked for a split and then stops. Uh, nothing is behaving as it should. And hell branching into fans, it seems that way, doesn't it? I cannot think of a compelling reason why the fans would not spin. That's a crack up. Wow, we've really done a number on this one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, feed 5 volt, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll only have SO though when I plug the battery in. We still don't have SO when we 
start up from the charger only. Anyway, well. All right, that's it. I am out. So this is a um, bad night. Sorry about that, folks. It's the way it goes sometimes. Just got to go and uh, have some food, sleep on it, and try again tomorrow. If I push any further, I'm just going to make more mistakes than what I'm going to be fixing, and that's not what we want to do. So, let's see. Yes, damn and L. Yes, I agree. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching. Maybe better luck tomorrow. Until then, you'll take care. I'll see you later.